Hello everyone, the Welcome Matt here, bringing you another board game review where we strive to bring you reviews that are clear, correct, concise, and even creative. My name is Matt. Today we're going to be reviewing a board game called Turn Eye from currently Z-Man Games. Turn Eye is currently ranked 612th on the Board Game Geek website ranking. It's about 384 in the strategy, somewhere around there. It is a two to four player card hand management slash worker placement game that plays in roughly 30 to 60 minutes according to the box. It's designed by the same folks that brought you the game. I believe it's pronounced Twa. So some consider it design wise and, and some elements the little brother or little sister to that game. Let's go ahead and take a look at the game and I'll describe what's going on in it as we go through it. Now basically in turn I, you're going to be working to restore the prestige on the city of uh, turn I, which was attacked by the Normans in the year 881 and it's been about 30 years and people are finally returning to the city to rebuild their homes and repair the damage caused by the invasion of, uh, of Normandy. So you're going to be constructing and operating and building these prestigious buildings to bring prestige and fame to the great city that was once prosperous many years ago. In this game you're going to have basically you're trying to design a 3x3 three three grid and we'll have our grid here in just a minute and we're trying to get the most points to defeat our opponents. And there's three main types in this game. You have the yellow, which is basically kind of like ordinary citizens. Then we have the, uh, or civilians. Then we have the religious, the white. And we have the military, the red. And every turn you're gonna do one of two main phases, shown right here. You can either play a card in your district from your hand, which is optional, or you can perform precisely one actions with your sin sentence, which is mandatory. You can do one of these six actions described right here, and you must do one of them every turn. Now, let's go through each of these actions very briefly. You can draw a card, and basically the way drawing a card works is you have these little workers over here in your plaza, and every round that you have these workers out, and by round I mean as they're available, um, you can use them to do different actions. So for example, I have a level one card here. I can use one worker to draw a level one card. The higher the level of the card, the more workers it takes. So a level two card, I have to have two of my yellow guys to get this level two, and then three to get a level three card. Now the way you can get more workers is by getting them from up here. These are open for everybody to try to grab their hands at. And one of the ways you can gather them, if you're playing with an optional rule, is by uh, spending five coins to gather them. There's also cards, though, that will allow you to buy them for different rates. Uh, it just kind of depends on it, what rules you want to use for that. But um, basically, let's just say that I'm using one of my guys here, and what you'll do is you'll draw the first two cards that are on the top. And I'll notice here that I have the Senator and the Journeyman, and they have different abilities. And so I'll notice here that the Journeyman uh, lets me do something that gains me one coin. I don't remember what that icon is off the top of my head. And this guy lets me do something that's a little more complicated because this is actually an expansion card. Uh, basically, uh, the expansion cards uh, are ones that don't come with the base deck but you can trade them out for other cards and they're a little more complicated with their abilities and I'm not used to this one so that's why I don't I, I don't know the ability on either of those, I'm not used to using those cards but um and I guess I'll go ahead and say here that's one of the most difficult things at the start of this game is it has a lot of icons on the cards and thankfully all of the icons are listed here on the back so you know what each of the things is going to do but it does take a little bit of, of learning them, and this is definitely the kind of game that rewards patience. If you play the game a couple of times, then you'll know what the icons do, you'll learn what the cards are doing, and you can develop a greater strategy. So if you like that, this is definitely the kind of game for you. But this is not a game that 
you're just going to pick up and really get it the first time you play it, probably. So anyways, you're going to choose one of those two cards. You would keep one and put it in your hand, and then the other one is going to go on top of the card pile right here. Now, this one that I played in my hand, I can now, as was shown at the first turn, first part of your turn here, play a card in my district. So on my next turn, I can buy this card if I have the cost, which is shown in the top left here. This one costs me one coin, and it gives me zero victory points, but it has an ability that may be helpful for me in other ways. And it's also a building, which I can use it for different things too, for other points with different cards and combinations and such. Now, if there's already a card on the top and you want to draw a card, which after you pick one of the two cards initially, you'll put one back on top, you can either take this top card when you draw a card, or you can put it face down at the bottom and then choose blindly from the next top two cards and do the same thing, picking a card and then putting it on the top and so on and so forth. Now, if you draw, as you're drawing the cards, one of these guys right here, the town crier, it's kind of like a pan, uh, epidemic and pandemic. Basically, he'll go like this on the bottom of, of the deck, and he'll trigger what's called an event. And there's different events in the game. There's a stack of them right here. But you'll see some of them here. They're very thematic, like excommunication, procession, and heresy. Sometimes the event is bad. So excommunication, I'm losing one of the guys from my plaza right here, off to the side. He's excommunicated. Uh, whereas procession, I get two coins if I have the most of all of the religious guys, buildings, and characters uh, compared to everyone else. Heresy was bad because it will make me not be able to use uh, a certain building or character for that the remainder of that round until I bring all of my guys back to the plaza and you basically refresh everything. So heresy is, is bad. For, for the church, uh, very uh, thematic there. And uh, that's basically what events will do to you. There's a couple of ways you can combat an event. One is if you are able to during your turn, and this is the third action, so I'll go ahead and explain that to you, combating an event. If I spin a coin and I spin a white guy right here during my turn, I flip him over, and I send a coin, a denier, and put it to the bank, then I can combat this card if there's already one coin on it. And basically, now I gain this card as a rampart, and it gains me a victory point at the end of the game, and if there's another event that attacks me in the future, I can use this guy to block that event from hurting me. So it's a win-win situation for you. And sometimes you'll want to combat cards because they're hurting you, or maybe there's a certain card that's helping your opponent too much, and you just don't want them to get that help anymore. Now the second event that you can do during the mandatory section is activate a building in your district. So let's say that I built the brewery or I built it this turn. Now I want to activate it. So I spin one of my guys and I activate the building. Um, some of them, like for example the market here, if I have the market down, you can see that it gets me five coins. So I activate this building and then I know that it's activated, you'll, you'll put something on it to let you know, hey, it's been used, don't use it again until uh, you gather all your citizens and then you can reuse all your buildings again. So then I'll get five points. And that's good to know because if you kept reusing certain buildings over and over, that would be way too powerful, especially like the market getting five coins every turn, that would be, that would be pretty powerful. Um, so you can activate one of your buildings. You'll also have down here guys like characters like for example the knight here, characters are not activated, they always have an ongoing effect. So they'll tell you if you do this, then this you know, will happen. If you build this certain thing, or if you have this down here and a, an event tries to happen, then you will get coins or something like that. Um, it just depends. But characters, you don't activate them. They're always having their effects ongoing sometimes affecting things within your grid, sometimes affecting things that are going on over here in different ways. Fourth thing you can do is you can earn money. For every guy that you use, you can get $2 to say that I'm not going for red right now and I decide I can use some money. I can put both these guys down and get $4 for denier that way. 
And then the fifth thing I can do is gather my citizens. After, you know, I went, and then my opponent went, and then I went again, and eventually I may get to the place where all or almost all of my guys are used up, and I say, you know what, I really want my guys back. Maybe I especially want these yellow guys right here. And so I flip everybody back up, and then I'll remove whatever, you know, disabilities that I have on my building if something was marked or an attack so I couldn't use it while while that round was going on of not gathering to my plaza then I can gather to my plaza again and I get access to those buildings again and that's basically how you go through the different phases of the game and you'll go through all these things you'll continue to build up your tableau and add things until the game end is triggered now hopefully you can get your 3x3 grid out in time and the goal is to get these prestige buildings which give you tons of points so like the mint here for every four coins I get two victory points whereas you'll notice my opponents will get one victory point for every four coins they have so most of the prestige buildings will have effects that are for you and for your opponent there are a few that um, only affect you I think like the cathedral for instance if you I don't know where it is in here but if you get so many coins and you get that you'll get a bunch of here it is right here you get like eight victory points and your opponent gets none so that's a really nice card for you but 20 coins is nothing to, to be scoffed at that takes a lot of work to get to those coins and a lot of turns and uh there are cards in this game that will let you steal coins from your opponent and you can use coins to use your opponent's citizens the, in the the military and, and the religious guys and the civilians that are in their plaza and block them from gaining access to them. Now they're getting coins, but you may hurt them a, a real turn or two by doing that to them. So there's a lot of player interaction in this game by, by looking at what's going on with your opponents and trying to figure out what are, what are they building, what are they going for, how can I mess them up. And that will help you decide when you want to try to trigger the end of the game. The, the desired way you, you normally want to trigger the game is if you have two prestige buildings in your tableau of 3x3, which these prestige buildings are shown by this castle, dice, cup, tower looking symbol thing. If you have two of those and a 3x3 three three grid, if I imagine I have three more cards here, that triggers the end of the game. And there's certain things you'll do at the end of the game. But, um,. That's one way you can do it. The other way is you'll notice I have the Town Crier, right? Well, there's one of those in every one of these decks here. And if I draw one more than the number of players playing, that triggers the end of the game. So in a two-player game, I only need to draw three of these, so two more of them in this case, in order to trigger the end of the game. Whereas in a three-player game, you have to draw four of them, and in a five-player game, you have to draw five of them. And that'll change your strategy a little bit. You may notice, okay, I haven't drawn this, you know, town crier out of this deck, but I'm really wanting.